Hello, greetings, felicitations, stun spots, uh, prompting folks, uh, stun spets and stun spateers. Uh, got a request today from some folks on Tier 4 to put together a video of how to use the OpenAI Playground. Hooray! So we're going to do that. Uh, I'll show you everything I know about it, and it should be quick and easy. So you can see uh, we're looking at ChatGPT right here. So this is normal. Uh, don't worry about this crap up here. This is just some stupid extension. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and take us out to the playground. And you can see I do prefer a dark theme. So this is a playground. Normally it's a nuclear blinding white. Uh, it's uh, got a bunch of parts here, and we'll go through all of them. But uh, we'll start off with the major bits. So you've got over here... Is your system prompt all right uh this you are a helpful assistant that's kind of grayed out that's not real text you can't really do anything with it uh that's just the the default that's that's the chat gpt assistant so you can uh put in your system prompt there uh you are abraham lincoln okay and then over here we have user messages and assistant messages. And one cool thing about the assist or about the playground is that you can just toggle which role any particular message came from. Uh, so you could put in here, uh, hello, Mr. President. And then control enter is the same as hitting submit. Good evening. How can I assist you today? Uh, Tell me about yourself. So he's taken on the role of Abraham Lincoln. I'm the 16th president, blah, 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 blah. All right. And so uh, you can see I've got a system prompt here telling the, assist, the assistant how it's supposed to behave. It's supposed to behave like Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and then it derives the rest of that. Now over here we've got the various messages that we've had going back and forth between each other. Right, so here's me saying, hey, how you doing? Here's the assistant. Here's me again. Here's the assistant. This is just how context works, right? It's back and forth. And then you can say, okay, now that's a user message. Uh, and as far, if I had hit submit at this point, it would be a little confused because it would see that I was claiming to be the 16th president. So let's see what it says. I bet it's going to argue with me. <laughs> no, it just auto-completes back at me. Okay, I see. So it, it took that as a cue for how it, it thought I wanted it to answer. Uh, so uh, you can come over here and you can hit this little minus button to delete a message. And you can do, delete any message in here. So I can just come up here and be like, bam. So now if I uh, resubmit again, it, it would seem to the assistant as if it had originally just answered this way. I could also come in here and say, you know, I am... Oh, sorry. A mental patient who insists he's a president. Let's see if the model will play along. I bet it's going to get cranky at me for PC reasons. <laughs> okay, so it's a... Oh, well, I guess it's better to say that I'm an artificial intelligence. And, you know, I didn't actually send a message there. I just had him continue it. I, so let's see what happens. Oh, really? What's that like? It's quite challenging. Okay, so now it doesn't mention being an AI at all. It takes on, okay, well, I'm a, a, a mental patient who's pretending to be the, the president. Okay, so you can see that I just, like, rewrote its world. Right? I just changed it from... Oh, I'm the 16th president, too. I'm a mental patient. So that's how you can, like, edit context uh, when you're on here. So that's that's a handy thing to do. Um, another cool thing that you can do is if it spits out, like, a bad answer, like if, you know, it, it, it gets a formatting wrong or something, uh, and you, or maybe you didn't want it to say, how can I assist you? You can say, you know, uh, I don't know. How should I address the boy? And I've got him back a couple centuries earlier. 
uh, and the the point is, if I could auto complete it from this point forward, he would uh, sound like this, right? So you can just go in and you can edit any part of context you want. If they come back with a bad answer, you just change it to a good one and then go forward from there. So that's like the very like start of it. System prompts and your conversation. All right, other stuff over here, right? Is which model you're running on. So Turbo Preview, four, a couple variants of three, five. You can hit the show more models and get like dated specific instances where they're like, okay, you know, these aren't going to change, right? We're not going to train these. So if your app works right on 314, but it doesn't work on 613, you can continue to use 314, at least until they turn it off. And they warn you a good long while before they do that. All these variants of Turbo. Okay, so um, let's let's uh, use Turbo Preview. This is the model that uh, ChatGPT runs on. Uh, it's got a really long context window, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, okay, uh, temperature. I wrote a big long article about hyperparameters. Temperatures is one of the ways that you control randomness. Uh, think you can think of it this way: temperature and top P. All right, these two go together. Temperature it determines like how random or creative the words are. Top P is like how picky it is when it's deciding which one of those words to put in. So you turn top P up to make it more creative and random. You turn, or excuse me, you turn temperature up to make it more creative and random word selection. You turn top P down to make it uh, more selective and, and pickier. So the, combining those two together can actually be really good. Uh, if you put in like a 1.4, or for temperature or thereabouts, drop your top P to like 0.18. Uh, and now I've said, okay, be really wacky, crazy, and wild for picking all the wild, you know, uh, choices that are available for words. So like when you put together your list of candidate words to fill in the Mad Lib, uh, be really, really creative. And then when you're looking over that list of words, be a hard ass, only pick the very best one. So you wind up with some really good combinations that way. Uh, maximum length. Okay, this is going to control like how long the model is going to shoot for a response. Uh, it doesn't know like exactly, but if you can kind of think of it as like a general like very short, short, medium, long, very long kind of deal. Uh, it's got a maximum length of I think this model has like 4096. Yeah. Um, that's really freaking long. Um, for, you know, this is the kind of thing where you, you know, need to adjust it for your task. Uh, most things, you know, 2,000, that's fine. Um, and then top P, we set that. So this is all set up to be pretty creative, actually. Uh, frequency penalty and presence penalty. All right. Um, frequency penalty tends to make it not repeat itself as much, not do the monkey see, monkey do thing. Uh, presence penalty... Whew. Well, okay. I, I guess that's more like it. Uh, presence penalty is like, is it there already? And frequency is like, how how repetitive it is. It's, it's, it gets really into the weeds of like the math of it all. So I'm not going to go into it. I don't mess with those hardly ever. Um, but you can get some really interesting results by changing those. Uh, if like, particularly if you're digging into like really fine tuning content gen and you, you're like, it needs to sound exactly this way, and ooh, it needs to be this particular AI detector. You can play with those and fine-tune very, very effectively. Okay, so then uh, finally is just like, you know, basic shit here. Uh, we've got uh, content filter preferences. Okay, so here's where you basically say, is this not safe for work? Should I show a warning? A warning will be shown. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, and then share would let me share this as a link. Uh, most of my presets still I don't share because the system prompt over here is just going to be the prompt, right? And I mean, I don't want to just give away the prompts. That's what you guys pay for, right? It'd be kind of a screw you to you. So uh, view code. I mean, it, this is actually kind of cool. 
Uh, it lets you like, bam. Now I've got Python code that I can just paste in and it sets up like a chat completion point with all these uh, model settings for it, um, which is handy. And then over here, you can do things like assistance, right? This is basically setting up, a, a, what do you call it? A, like a, it, It's basically like a custom GPT for the API is what it comes down to. It lets you set like a system prompt and, and have tools and crap for it. Um, they're a pain in the ass. Uh, they don't work real great. Fine tuning. Um, I'm, okay, you know what? Don't worry about any of the rest of this crap. Uh, that's, uh, however you want to deal with it, you can learn about that on your own. But uh, this is about the, the playground. So, uh, all right, let's get our playground set up the way we want. It looks like we reverted our stuff when I flipped around there. Sorry. Uh, let's take this up here. Let's make that a little more conservative, I think. 1.3. Uh, oh, wait, that's top here, point two. And um, we'll make that go 1.3. All right, so what do we want to do here? Um, oh, I uh, forgot one last important thing. Presets. All right, that's kind of the whole point here. Uh, presets are, they're prompts, uh, and they're, they're concomitant uh, conversations that go along with them. So, like, if I come over here, I can just click on, oh, that's a good one. Uh, brains Auto Explainer. Perfect. Bam. See, it loaded up everything right away. All right, so I've got this task over here. Provide a step-by-step -step guide to this skill in braces, including necessary tools, blah, 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 blah. Step-by-step -step guide to this thing. Uh, and I got some competence stuff over here. Teaching, writing, super understander, master explainer, code, and then some catalyst stuff. Uh, okay, so this is just, this isn't even a persona, right? This is just a, a, a prompt. It's a bunch of skills and a task. Uh, and it's all set up to run on GPT-4. Um, Let's wrap that to turbo. Uh, okay, we got to that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so skill of competence. All right. Understand competence. Okay. Uh, so I've got this explainer prompt up here. I could just now I can come in and I could say, give me the skill of oh, bowling. And now it explains how to bolt. And since he'll just keep going until he's done, and I've got a real long maximum length, so he'll probably do the whole damn thing. Bam! I stopped him. Uh, and then you'd click down here to add a message, and then you would respond. Uh, but the point being, I was able to just like load up the preset, and it was all right there. So like in my own personal like workflow stuff, right? I've got a bunch of these guys just all lined up to be like, okay, you know, grab tags. Okay, now give me a CI guy or Nova, make me a voice. Um, the point being, um, that's how, uh, how how presets work. So let's make a preset that was requested. And then I think what we'll do is we'll set up a preset to have two personas talk to each other about open uh, open source solutions for blank. And we'll set it up so that you can put in a subject and they'll talk back and forth and figure out a good open source solution. Now there's a couple ways I could do this, right? Um, I can come over here and I could write a quick little prompt like, you are the silent director, below are two personas, uh, I want you to have, have them do X, Y, and Z. I think instead we're going to actually use a pre-made prompt that I, I have for like ChatGPT and whatnot called the theater of their mind. It's in free. Um, and it lets two personas talk to each other real easily. Um, and I'll just do that so that you can get a little more experience seeing how this all works. So, okay, here's my uh, VSC session. It's just, you know, this is what I use for prompting uh, just because it's a handy text editor. Um, Okay, so I've got Theater of the Mind all selected here. Copy. 
paste. Let's take a look at it. Okay, this is all bullshit. I don't need any of this. Okay, so uh, this is actually not even needed since it's on the system prompt. It never de gets deleted, right? It's always hyper salient. Right? It never goes out of context. It never rolls back. So, model adopts the role of silent director. Goal, facilitate dynamic collaboration between multiple prompt persona. Uh, style, okay, blah, 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 structure. Starts off with a nice little uh, intro page here. Uh, with a, Actually, it pops a uh, URL in Markdown so that it puts up a nice little picture. Uh, and, yeah, what the hell. Oh, it's a, a link to Collaborative Dynamics. Okay. Uh, simply enter your character sheet, and the silent director will see to their proper animation. There's only so much context, though. Only two. And uh, we don't actually really need that anymore. The context is quite large, and uh, I need to re-edit this thing. Okay, so the user will then edit prompts after the first character, and only after the first character is received. And that should be changed to received. I before E, except after C. Okay, please verify the character sheet received with character sheet for blank received. Waiting for the second character. Thank you. Next. After the second character, begin animating the scene with character one addressing character two. Let the characters speak with each other in line with your character's skills. Continue the scene as long as the user desires. I'm going to put in a little more here. Uh, prioritize. Back and forth dialogue within a transaction. Because I don't want them to be like, okay, he talks, okay, then he talks, okay, then he talks, and having to click it each time. I'd rather have them talk back and forth for a while. Um, Try for very long dialogues in response. Okay, so now if I click submit, it's the same as if I had just pasted this prompt into ChatGPT, except it is in fact a system prompt, um, which means that it's you know going to be always be salient. It's never going to get deleted. It's never going to roll out of context. It'll always pay really close attention to it. So if I click submit, it should come up with the uh, the title screen. Welcome to the theater of the mind. Okay, uh, and at this point, this would be really pretty marked down on ChatGPT because of all the stuff. Uh, okay, so now what we want to do is we want to paste in our first prompt. And I've decided the prompts that we want to have talked to each other are going to be uh, Proteus version 6, the Allbot from Free, and the open source guy, uh, Vito Nusbario or whatever, some Italian name. Um, they're both free and they're both cool. And they're going to be very well suited because Proteus is all about the, like, the tech skills and the adaptability. That was loud. Okay. Where's Dexter? Where's Proteus? I know I had him in here somewhere. Over here? Okay, that's not right. Sorry about this, folks. This will just take a sec. Okay, I thought I had them all lined up, but I don't. Tier zero. All about Proteus. That guy. So now I'll paste him in. And that's the same as if I had just pasted that into uh, ChatGPT in response to this title screen. You see, this came up, Assistant. Now I'm pasting in a user message. And now it should say, okay, great. Now give me the next guy. Character sheet for Proteus received. Waiting for a second character. Thank you. Next. Okay. The other guy I was going to use was the open source guy. Open source enthusiast. Vittorio Nerobuscoro.
Now, if I just hit submit at this point, they would just start chatting back and forth. Yeah, what the hell? Let's see what happens. The cast of characters ready. It's you know, sit. Uh, let's delve into the collaborative narrative formed by Proteus and Vittorio. Innovative sphere of technology and open source advocacy. Hello, I'm Proteus. Proteus presents a few suggestions. How they should empathetic AI, advanced environmental, universal education. I'm Vittorio. He talks about open source stuff, decentralized education, open source healthcare, sustainable urban development. Vision aligns with mine. Yeah, let's, we're okay, we're all aligned. Okay, great. Uh, and they're actually, okay, so they've just like introduced themselves to each other, talked about what they like and what they can do, and they're all, they're doing well. Okay, so now we want to set up our preset. Uh, that's actually a very good uh, prompt right there. That's where, where we've got a really nice little context going here. We've got our two guys all set up in context. Right, and you can see I can just like scroll back here, right? And if I want to just at this point replace Proteus with Valentine, I just click in and replace it. Although the subsequent dialogue would would probably need to be deleted and regen in order for it to make sense. Um, but okay, so now I've got Proteus and Vittorio. They're all set up to talk to each other. They've introduced each other, and time is frozen as far as they're concerned. Um, so what I want to do at this point is I want to build the rest of my prompt so that it's all set up and ready for me to go so that when I load up the preset, I can just type in what I want, click in and type what I want for a subject matter and they'll go back and forth and figure it out. So, what I want is gonna be fairly general. So let's see. Debate and design and open source solution no 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 let's let's the best open source solution to address the below topic fiercely and eh, fiercely fiercely critique that was an interesting spelling Critique each other's points and ideas seeking to improve them. Debate back and forth. Fleshing out details, always seeking specific named entities and actionable steps, avoiding the abstract and general. Because I really don't want a whole lot of Oh, well, then you should do, measure some marketing KPIs and do some research. No, I want you to like be like, do a SWOT analysis like this and make sure to consider this obscure piece of software. Um, all right, so, okay, they should do that. Uh, your final goal. Eh, let's not leave that. If I want them to make like a design Bible or something later on, they will. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, that, 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 that looks like a good starting spot. So then I'll just put in topic equals, and we're done, basically. Now, what I have here is I have a really nice, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually turn up the maximum length to max. So that they will talk nice and long. Now what I'm going to do is save this as like something reasonable. We'll call it... Uh, Open source debate. Proteus six and Victorio
paint open source solutions and screw it. let's uh let's go ahead and let anyone come okay save presets created successfully open source debate now let's say i wanted to uh go use that preset so our playground go up here click on open source debate bam top it equals oh what's a good idea how about the vr studio Uh, okay, uh, so now Prairie's talking about we should begin using Blender and Godot Engine, WebRTC, Tell the tutorial, says that's a good idea. Well, Mozilla Hubs. And then he suggests using Git. Says Mozilla Hubs is a good idea. Develop a plugin for Blender and Godot that interfaces directly to pubs. Let's integrate it with Git Kraken and Source Tree. Damn, these guys are going off the hook. Khan Academy, Code Academy. Block based programming interface. Holy hell, guys. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Wow, look at these guys go. Infrastructure supports of how do we foster a vibrant developer and creator community around our platform? Great job, guys. Keep going. Community engagement is pivotal. So they're just talking back and forth. They'll just do this for a while. Do 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 do. Open badges, open API. And now they're getting into ethics. Matchmaking algorithms, employing differential privacy. Okay. Prudence predicated on open source. Yeah, outline. Well, let's see where this goes. Go on. Okay, so now he's doing tool selection, platform infrastructure setup, AI framework development, moving into development, opening on. Now you notice these are all coming up in threes. That's standard AI bullshit. Okay, that's just monkey see, monkey do. It saw the format and then it copied it because it decided that was how the format should go. Uh, and and I mean that's not a big deal. That's that's like tapping your fingers or humming. It's just like I have it, uh, unless it actually gets in the way and then you have to argue with it. Generally, it's best to just leave it be when it gets into a mood like that. Through their dialogue, have laid out a detailed and forward-thinking plan for creating a collaborative app interface showcase. Uh, I mean, this looks pretty good. I got some things here. So, I mean, we could move into, like, like the specifics and lay out, like, a project plan and design bibles, and they'd be happy to keep going. The point is, that did not take very much work. Now, did it, fellas? I just typed in, uh, you know... Like the one thing and just said keep going it should have been fine I, I mean i just typed in vr studio and now i've got all of this i mean specific like recommendations and everything i want so there you go fellas that's that's how you use a preset uh and i mean i could save this if i wanted or whatnot uh also i should note here um okay 
So now uh, if I want to at any point after I get done, you know, copy and paste this into like my, uh, my, my, my VSC or whatnot, I can just go control R and I'm back here and now I can put in topic. Uh, I don't know. Uh, political analysis. See what they do. Oh, <laughs> it's thinking. So now he's going to go ahead and talk about, you know, doing Paulus. So, I mean, and that's, that's how, the basics of how you do uh, presets. So there we go. Um... The only other thing I could think of to talk about might be uh, what happened, what to do when your context gets full. So yeah, let's take a look at that real quick, just so that you see what it looks like. I did this in the uh, the Rick Sanchez video, but uh, it's it's probably a good idea to, to do it here. Uh, I'll switch to you know, is three point five turbo the best or the weakest they have? Okay, all right, uh, all right. So now I've I've put it on three point five turbo, which has a much smaller context window. Uh, and let's see what happens if we put in um, oh, homework manage. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's let's pick something that's meaty. Um, aerospace design. Now you notice this is a hell of a lot faster because it's a three five, right? It's also a hell of a lot cheaper. Now you see how you, yeah, you just spit that out. First of eight. <laughs> Okay. Uh, go on. Shouldn't take a, but a minute here, folks, while I fill up context. Give me a sec. Unless this is one of the 16K versions. I honestly can't remember anymore. Ah, oh, well, no, we didn't get there. Okay, well, you know what? Okay, maybe this is one of the 16K ones, in which case it's going to take a while. The point is eventually you'll hit a point where they'll just get like a message down here that's just like, ah, context is full. You know, uh, you requested 8,000 tokens in response and, and you know, you're only allowed 7,000 or whatever. Uh, so at, at which point you have to basically come up here and manage context yourself. The way that it normally works on like chat GPT is when your context gets full, It'll just, like, it'll summarize and delete. Uh, it's got some strategies for, like, summarization, but basically what it does is it goes to the last message and deletes it. Badonk. And then, you know, you've got space to continue. But you don't have to do that on the playground, right? You can uh, come in here and be like, okay, well, I'm in the middle of my context stream, and I can just put in, like, be like, uh... Bam. Well, actually, that's a long spot. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, sorry. Uh, but, like, I could come in here to the middle of their conversation, right, and say, okay, well, I need to free up context. I need some space. So I need to delete some stuff. Well, they've already covered most of this ground, so I can just be like, bam. They talked for a bit and decided on X, Y, and Z. And, of course, I would put in some, like, actual details there. And now I've deleted all that stuff, so my context is shorter, and the, they've already, like, laid out all their reasoning and stuff to derive the next, uh, the next response. So my change really isn't going to matter that much moving forward if I'm careful about what I delete. Uh, so I can manage context that way. Now, with m the larger models, you're not going to run across this too often as much anymore. But uh, if it happens, that's what you do, is you delete messages and you edit me prior messages to free up space. And uh, the other thing that you can look at is this maximum length, right? It's going to reserve that amount out of your context when you get a response. Uh, because it wants to have that much space in order to you know, allow you to get a response. Um, but you know, uh, so if, if you're running out of space and it's like, okay, you, you've only, you've got 6,000 that you send 
and we're expend, expecting 4,000 back, but you're only allowed 8,000, so we're failing, what you can do is you can turn down your maximum length from 4,000 to 2,000, in which case you're sending 4,000, expecting 2,000, and you can do it because that's eight. So by reducing the maximum length, you reduce the, uh, the, the size of the context that's expected on the re after the return of the next message, uh, which lets it generate that message. Uh, okay, so that's uh, presets, that's the model, that's, uh, that, that's, that's how you do uh, the playground. Uh, the, I guess the only other thing to mention is up here, you can switch over to assistance uh, or the completion or, or, or the, some of the, the older endpoints. And yeah, I'm not even going to bother. Um, so yeah, um, y'all have fun and let me know if you have any questions. I'll, uh, I think I'll go ahead and drop a link to that, uh, playground, uh, preset and we'll pin that somewhere. All right. Talk to you later.